With a lot of anticipation, I recently took delivery of this. This is the Samsung Galaxy Book 2. This is a two-in-one I've been waiting for all year. This is being touted as being a mobile PC. Now, this has the Qualcomm Snapdragon 850, which is an upgrade over the 835. Some of the other models we checked out earlier this year ran that much slower, weaker processor. So we'll check out the 850 to see where this stands. And it also has a more Surface-like device with a built-in kickstand, just like the Surface Pro 6. And of course, it has built-in LTE. We'll talk more about that in just a little bit. Hey everybody, this is Andrew, and this is my unboxing and first look at the Samsung Galaxy Book 2, coming up. Today's video is brought to you by Zero and Nine, your one-stop shop for Windows 10 professional OEM keys, Microsoft Office keys, as well as Steam CD keys, and so much more. All the links below for more information and where you can get these great discounts. And also a special discount code for my viewers. Want to see more videos like this? Well, why not hit that subscribe button and make sure you hit that notification icon. This way you'll be alerted every time I post a new video. And don't forget to check me out on my social media, especially Twitter, because that's where I post all the latest updates. So here's a quick rundown of the specs. It has a 12 inch Super AMOLED display, which is absolutely gorgeous. A Qualcomm Snapdragon 850 processor is powering this with four gigabytes of RAM, 128 gigabytes of onboard storage. It is expandable via the micro SD card slot, and it also has built in LTE. We'll talk more about that in just a little bit. And it comes in at $999 US. I'll put all the links below for more information and where you can buy one. But enough with the specs. Let's find out what you get inside the box. Let's open it up. Now opening the box, you're greeted by the keyboard. I like the fact they include that with the price, not something you get with the Surface Pro 6. That's a separate purchase. And looking at the keyboard, it is very similar to the type cover from the Microsoft offering, although not quite as high end in my opinion, just a step below, but good nonetheless. Now you also get some documentation as well as a SIM ejector tool. We'll talk more about the LTE and the micro SD card slot in just a moment. And unlike the Surface Pro 6, they include the pen at the $999 price point, and I think it's so far a really good value. It's the S Pen, 4,096 levels of pressure sensitivity. There are a few upgrades from previous models. This has an eraser on the top. It so far feels pretty good. We'll test it out as well in this video. You get a tip remover tool as well as some extra tips, USB-C cable as well as USB-C charger. We'll talk about charging times and the battery life in the full review. And of course you get the Galaxy Book 2 in the box. And looking at it for the first time, holding it for the first time, it really looks really nice. I really like this metallic look, really high end, very premium looking indeed. Now, one thing you're going to notice is this is very similar to the Surface Pro 6. It has a kickstand just like the Surface Pro 6, strong metal hinge that goes all the way back, giving you a really low profile, giving you a really low angle. So far, I'm really liking it. Also notice that it has some really nice metal buttons on it, good to the touch. And of course, your pogo pin connectors on the bottom to connect your type cover. And I can tell you right away, the magnet is very strong, nice, sturdy connection, all good. On the left side, you have your SIM tray, which houses the micro SD card slot, as well as your nano SIM for the LTE. And on the right side, you get two USB-C ports. I don't believe the Thunderbolt 3 and also one 3.5 millimeter headset jack. That's good to see as well. Now you can expand the storage via the micro SD card slot as well as putting in the LTE. Now this is tied to the AT&T here in the US. It is locked to this device, but you can unlock it, but you'll have to go through the unlocking process with AT&T. And that's kind of a bummer, but it can be unlocked from what I understand. I will attempt to do that this week and let you know how it goes. Once it's unlocked, I will test it with Verizon and T-Mobile and let you know my findings. Okay, so here's something new. You have a fingerprint sensor located right next to the rear facing camera. Setup was easy. Placement was, I would say, okay. Not the best placement because sometimes I found myself hitting the camera instead of the fingerprint sensor. So that's a bit of a negative, but I am glad to see that it does have a fingerprint sensor, something that was lacking on the original Galaxy Book. 
But without a doubt, the star of this show is its absolutely stunning 12-inch Super AMOLED display. It has a resolution of 2160 by 1440, that's 216 pixels per inch, and it has a 3 by 2 aspect ratio. That's my preferred aspect ratio for getting work done as far as productivity is concerned, as well as consuming media such as Netflix and YouTube. This Super AMOLED display demonstrates that Samsung is clearly the leader as far as screen technology right now, late 2018. Really deep blacks, extremely vibrant colors. This is by far one of the best displays I've ever seen on a tablet or a laptop for that matter. And it has an excellent coverage of the color gamut getting over 200% sRGB. That is simply fantastic. And it's also a pretty bright display, I'm guessing at least 350 nits, probably more. I'll do my full testing and that full review, so stay tuned for that. But so far, I'm really impressed with this display. Now, one thing you will notice, it does have some bezels, but that's to be expected. If you're going to be using this in tablet mode, there will be some bezels, so just keep that in mind. Okay, so here's the deal with the S Pen. It's improved over the last model in a number of ways, but it still uses the same Wacom EMR technology, meaning it's battery free. No need to get quadruple A batteries, no need to recharge, battery free, and I like that. And it has 4,096 levels of pressure sensitivity, so it's perfect for the digital artist and the note taker. Now it also has a cover that they didn't use last year that's something new with this one, but it does stick magnetically to the side of the tablet itself, although not as strong as the Surface Pro 6. Now so far I'm really liking this improved S Pen. It's great for the digital artist with that 4096 levels of pressure sensitivity. Palm rejection is really working well, it's spot on. And it's great for note taking as well, but I really like the fact that they include the eraser on the top. That's increased functionality from the last model. Now when it comes to the type cover, this is a major improvement over last year's model. Last year's model, as you can see here, wasn't the best solution. I didn't like the way this had to fold out, it took up too much space, and it just was a little bit kludgy, a little bit clumsy. This is much cleaner, much more akin to what you'd get with the Surface Pro 6 and its type cover, so that's a big improvement. This just feels a lot better than last year's model. The key travel is actually pretty good so far. It's got a multi-stage backlight. The trackpad's working okay, although a bit undersized, but it's working, it's pretty responsive. So far, I'm really liking this type cover, although it's not quite as premium feeling as the type cover for the Surface Pro 6, but it's a good solution nonetheless. Like other Samsung devices, this has AKG tuned speakers. They're side firing speakers. They get somewhat loud, not the loudest I've ever heard, but it actually sounds pretty decent. Let's hear it in action to give you an example of the sound. Now before we get to performance, a little bit of a background. Now remember earlier this year, I was one of the first reviewers to review the HP NVX2, the first unit to run with a Snapdragon 835, Windows on ARM, and I came away uh, pretty impressed in terms of battery life, but was disappointed in the performance. That's because it ran the Snapdragon 835, last year's processor, it just couldn't handle everything that was thrown at it, especially Chrome. It was very buggy, and I thought it wasn't ready for prime time. Now fast forward a little bit later, I reviewed the Lenovo Mix 630, same problem as the NVX2, I came away wanting better performance. So when Samsung released the Samsung Galaxy Book 2 and announced that it was running the Snapdragon 850, I was quickly intrigued by it because I wanted to see does this have the improved performance we were looking for. And without doing any further testing, since this is my unboxing and I've only had it less than 48 hours, I can tell you without hesitation, this is at least a 40%, maybe even 50% boost in performance. It's that much better. Now, okay, here's a little bit of context before we get to the actual numbers. This is the original Galaxy Book from last year. It's running the Core U processor. It's the Core i5-7200U, 7th generation Intel processor, so keep that in mind. It's got a single core score of 3699 and a multi-core score of 7343 on the Geekbench 4 test. Now, take a look at this. This is the Galaxy Book 2, the same test I ran on this device as I did on the original Galaxy Book. Check this out, 7106 on the multi-core score. It's slightly lower, obviously 2233 on the single core score, but this actually shocked me that it actually got a 7106 on the multi-core score, which is almost equivalent to that seventh generation Intel Core U processor.
Okay, so let's see what this all means. Take a look at this. The Microsoft Surface Pro 6 scored a 13,102 on that same multi-core score. The Lenovo Mix 630, the HP NVX2, both running the Snapdragon 835, fell well short of the Samsung Galaxy Book 2, running the more improved Snapdragon 850. The difference is pretty significant, as you can see. And to me, even more interesting is when you look at the original Galaxy Book from last year running a full-fledged Core U processor, it actually was pretty similar in terms of performance, although the single core score wasn't quite as good, but is virtually identical in terms of the multi-core score. And that really surprised me. But please keep something in mind. The Geekbench 4 is a synthetic benchmark. Real world usage may produce different results. So give me about a week to run all the benchmarks, do all the testing, use it as my daily driver to come with to some conclusion about this. But my initial impressions, less than 48 hours in terms of performance, I'm actually shocked by how good this is performing as opposed to the Snapdragon 835. And it's the equivalent of last year's Galaxy Book, which ran a full-fledged Core U processor. And that to me was very surprising. And finally, you're probably wondering, well, how's battery life going to be on this device? Well, I've had it less than 48 hours, but I can tell you it's been at least 10 and a half to almost 11 hours that I've been getting out of this on a single charge. But again, this has been early testing with it. I will be doing more extensive testing in my full review. Now, one of the benefits of running ARM on Windows that they touted when they first released these devices was you're going to get really epic battery life. And we saw that with the HP NVX2 and for the most part with the Lenovo Mix 630. So the Galaxy Book 2 is showing some pretty good battery life but not quite as good as those that were running the snapdragon 835 stay tuned for that full review to get the actual numbers so what do you think about the samsung galaxy book 2 so far i'm really impressed this is a definite improvement in terms of performance over the snapdragon 835 that we saw with the hp nvx2 and the others that i've checked out earlier this year running the arm processors and running windows 10. This is a definite improvement. I can tell you that right off the bat. But of course, I will do my full testing coming very soon in the next week or so. So give me a chance to check it out. Let me do my test. Let me run all the benchmarks and bring that to you very soon. But suffice it to say, gorgeous Super AMOLED display. That is simply excellent. The pen is really good. I am happy with the pressure sensitivity. Palm rejection is working great. And I like the fact that it is magnetic, although it's not the strongest magnet you'll ever find. It definitely can stick on there, much like the Surface Pro 6, just not as strong. I love the fact that they have a better setup on this with a kickstand, just like the Surface Pro 6, getting rid of that other kludgy method that they used with the keyboard case from last year. This is so much better. But I want to know what you think. Let me know in the comment section below. I'm really curious to see if this could be my daily driver in terms of a mobile PC. They've been touting this with that built-in LTE. I'll test that as well. So stay tuned, that full review is coming very soon. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, on Twitter, Instagram, and of course, my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.